Okay, so um, so just wanted to uh, look at um, Isaiah sixty six. Okay, Isaiah sixty six and um, verses one and two it says, um, "Thus says the Lord: Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me, and where is the place of my rest?" For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one will I look, on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word. Okay. So the Lord is actually talking about his grandeur and his you know, omnipotence and his awesomeness. He's talking about, you know, heaven is my throne, earth is my footstool, and and so on, because normally we we look at the earth and we are in awe of what is what we see. Um, but then he says, um, "This is on this one will I look." This is what moves God. Okay, this is what moves God. He says, "This one will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit, and who trembles at my word." So something um, that which gives which gives us God's perspective okay about a person who is uh, poor and a contrite spirit poor meaning you know I need something right I need something I'm needy and uh, and he's talking about a spiritual need here contrite meaning repentant heart and um, and then it says one who trembles at my word okay so something for us to for us to look at and not to you know lose that sense of reverence for God and uh, reverence for His Word, because this God is saying you know this this is something that gets my attention. This is something that um, that does not you know that uh, that does not escape my attention because God knows everything. There's nothing that He misses out, but He's drawn to this. It says one who is contrite in spirit, the one who is poor in spirit. And uh, one who's needy, and who trembles at my word. You know, trembles at my word, meaning one who really reveres the word, one who esteems the word, and one who has this kind of a reaction to the word of God. Right. So, uh, for something for us to emulate, and also to take to heart and say, God, I I want to be that kind of a person. You know, like many times when we, let's say, we look at the word of God, we consider the word of God, and uh, you know, we and, and as students, you know, spend a lot of time in the Word of God. So sometimes it can be an overload, overdose. You know, morning till evening, I'm just listening or reading, or somehow you know the Word of God is there. And but let's not lose that sense of wonder of the Word of God, right? Let's not miss out on that, and um, and let's let our hearts continue to. Or let our, let us continue to tremble at His word, right? Let's pray, Father. We thank you for this reminder, Lord, about your grandness, about your awesomeness, God. That um, yeah, heaven is your throne and earth is your footstool, God. And truly, you're uncontainable, Father God, in a in a physical place, O oh God, because you're omnipresent, ever present, God. And Lord, we thank you that you've also mentioned what is something that draws you, Father God, a person who is poor in spirit and contrite in heart and one who trembles at your word. And Lord, may we be people who will be like that. Lord, may we not ever, Father God, get hardened in our heart. Lord, may we ever, may we not, Lord, get jaded with things that we see around, Father God. But Lord, enable us to keep our heart tender and Father God, that we will never lose that sense of wonder of who you are and, and your word as well, Father God. We thank you. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's get back to Christian leadership. Where did we stop? Uh, celebration principle. Yeah. And why are we studying celebration principle? Um, nurturing relationships so that um, we, are, we are looking at how uh, relationships need to be um, 
um, built built to be nurtured, meaning cultivated. And this is one of the things, right, that we need to um, understand that um, in order to um, create um, or, you know, this, this is something that helps, right? If you're cultivating, there are certain things that help, especially if it's a garden or, you know, and but uh, celebration is something. So when we looked at celebration, we saw that it is about um, it is about being joyful when somebody wins, right? Somebody wins or somebody does a good thing, and you are actually celebrating. You are acknowledging it, and you are celebrating it. Okay. Now, what comes against that? What do you think comes against that? Against celebrating, against acknowledging. Um, what, what do you think comes in the way of being happy? What do you think? You're, you're true. I mean, uh, jealousy or envy is something which actually hinders us from celebrating. Okay, like where we see that, okay. Uh, um, yeah, I don't have it, this person ha has it. Or I have not accomplished, but this person has accomplished. Okay, So that's something which comes in the way. Right? And, um, and the thing is, what diminishes our joy is uh, when we don't celebrate with others. Right? It actually brings down our joy. And somebody wins, and then we don't celebrate it with them, or we don't celebrate them. Okay, um, So... So when we look at uh, envy or jealousy, you know, it, see, the, it, it's easy to celebrate or acknowledge something which uh, maybe it's something very different from what you have accomplished. Okay, um, maybe uh, your skills are different, your abilities, talents are different, and you see someone who is winning or uh, you know, or accomplishing something in a totally different area. Let, let's say you know that person is a sportsman. And you are not, okay. And you, 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 you know. I mean, you're interested in sports, but you're not really, you know, into it, right? So when that person accomplishes or wins something, you know, it's it's easy to celebrate, okay. But if it is your area of expertise, uh, you know, for example, if it is, let's say, um. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's uh, preaching, or let, let's look at ministry itself. You know, preaching, or maybe leading in worship, or something. And then you know that person does very well, and everybody is like uh, blessed by that. And sometimes you know, you your it's not wholehearted appreciation. It's like so I wish I could have done better. You know, your immediate first thing is comparison, and you're not really able to wholeheartedly appreciate or even celebrate with that person right so if it is your area of expertise or your area that you're involved in you know whatever uh, it could be ministry it could be profession uh, and then everybody's appreciating and saying wow this is great then we find it difficult okay so um i think that's something that we saw uh, laying the axe right to the root of self and jealousy and so on so so that's something that we need to be um, careful of uh, no matter how you know how mature we are and how experienced we are um, you know this can actually be a great hindrance right and we're talking about people we know that ministry is about people um, therefore you know we need to be really really careful about this it can it can come in you know various forms and uh, and various you know, uh, in different seasons of life, but we need to be careful. Okay, um, so this is something that really helps us uh, when we when we celebrate with others. Okay, um, because the Bible talks about rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Okay, it talks about Romans twelve fifteen, right? And uh, so, it, which means that you identify and you. You know, be one with you, empathize with what is happening, and you celebrate that. Okay. Um, if you're talking about a team, you know, celebration really helps build the team. Okay. We're going to look at team next, but it really helps build the team, helps build the 
uh, morale of the of the people okay and encourages people right um, and also when we uh, this is the best best way to when we appreciate when we compliment it's the best way to kill jealousy it's the best way to kill envy right destroy envy in our lives where we say okay um, uh, this is something that um, i want to do and wholeheartedly and deal with it so your flesh doesn't come in the way right you're building character and um, you know uh, like in the, in the in the book john c maxwell talks about how he's talking about some um, some big preachers and um, i'm sure uh, how many of us have watched that video of louis giglio you've seen that or uh, yeah um, louis giglio's uh, video he talks about um, i think awesome god or what is it um, how great is our god or something like that um, and he's talking about the bigness of the universe uh, i think you should yeah, sorry about the yeah about the blood cell i mean uh, yeah, yeah about the human cell uh, i think you, if you get an opportunity just watch it you can i'm sure it's on youtube so he talks about the bigness of the universe and how great god is and he also talks about the like the minute part you know things about our bodies and and how great god is in creating us uh, the wonder of it all um yeah so louis giglio talks about another friend of his who's in ministry uh, um uh, no, sorry uh, this pastor called andy stanley he talks about louis giglio and he says you know in his church is a big church big ministry big church and uh, if louis giglio is the guest speaker there everybody is very excited like he just has to announce you know louis giglio a great friend of mine is coming next sunday and he'll be preaching and and um, and everybody's like applauding and you know they're expecting and you know, everybody's wants to hear from louis giglio so he says that he feels a twinge of jealousy you know uh, when he sees that kind of response so he says that he goes out of the way to even though they are good friends right, he goes out of the way to deal with it right he goes out of the way to appreciate louis giglio he goes up out of the way to um, you know honor uh louis giglio so that it deals with his heart okay so so the, the celebration principle though it might seem like a very small thing um it is something that 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 we need to personally deal with and it's very practical we something that we will face as a challenge uh as a barrier to celebrate sometimes right um and we need to deal with it and and because of this you know in the body of christ there's a lot of strife division right and and paul talks about that right it's because you are exalting another person or one person is exalted and you're you know you're there is division because of that and uh, uh, because of envy and so on comparison right okay uh, what's the next one the next one is um, let me just share the notes yeah the high road principle okay okay the high road principle it, it just means that you you know if you're if you're going down a road it's just the picture that we have is uh, there's a road which is going down there's a road which is going up okay so you come to a place where there's a road going down going up so you take the high road okay what does it mean in life in life it means that when you're dealing with people and if somebody treats you uh, badly right somebody says something is rude to you treats you badly like don't retaliate in the same way right don't retaliate in this it doesn't mean that you don't deal with the problem or you don't tell that person that you know that they are wrong but don't retaliate in the same way you take the high road now may it be, may the re response be something that is higher but not lower okay because if you retaliate in the same way you're actually going down to their level right you're being rude you're being unkind uh maybe violent or whatever you're actually going down to their level the high road principle is that that you you be christ like and don't use that same method in which they treated you but you treat them um you know you continue to treat others well okay so um yeah sorry um just one second yeah so he talk i just wanted to read that um um read this quote by this person named Henry Ward Beecher and he says keep a fair sized symmetry in your backyard 
in which to bury the faults of your friends. Okay, he says keep a cemetery like that in your backyard to bury the um, faults of your friends. Okay, so uh, this John C. Maxwell talks about various people and uh, about people who actually responded in a nice manner even though they were treated poorly you know people in ministry and he also talks about william booth and um, william booth and the salvation army and how he was actually in his early days of ministry he was not treated well by the church right and persecuted by the church because he wanted to reach out to those people on the streets with the gospel right um, but the, the the ones who were poor the ones who were needy the ones because the church was not allowing them to come inside because they were you know they were dirty and they were you know they didn't have clean clothes or their manners were rough and so on but william booth actually went to the streets right so so the church kind of did not like that the organized church right? so and they persecuted him and they did not like that but then he continued to do what he wanted to do but also responded in kindness uh, you know his he did not retaliate uh, you know and, and even the the media media those days of course newspapers um, he did not re retaliate right so so when we take the high road we we need to be aware that you know what uh, happens in you you're giving a lot of importance to what is happening inside of you okay the bible talks about keep your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life keeping your heart right so which means that there is no offense in your heart which harder talks about hebrews 3 talks about how we should not be uh, let our hearts not be hardened uh, because of sin which is so deceitful right so the thing is this that we keep our hearts with all in diligence so when we take the high road you're actually protecting your heart right you're not allowing offense to come into your life you're not allowing bitterness to come into your life which can actually harden our hearts and uh, and really be a uh, be a barrier for whatever god wants to do in our lives right we are offended with people we are offended uh, and then you know we're not able to hear god properly because all these things are blocking right all these things are really choking what god wants to speak or what god wants to do with this in our lives right so um so we are actually more concerned about what is happening in us than what could possibly happen to us you know, is it so that's a different so when we take the high road if we want to be you know practical about this and really you know use this in our lives we are concerned about what's happening in us right so so you think okay if i'm going to you know react in anger if i'm going to take revenge if i'm going to do this then there's a lot of things that are going to change in me my internal condition is going to change right um, i'm going to feel angry i'm going to feel bitter i'm going to be doing all this uh, but you're you're more concerned about what is happening in you okay so that's uh, that's the thing so and also when you take the high road it doesn't mean that it's a one time thing okay we need to understand it's not a one time thing that you're going to face these kind of challenges and especially when it comes to ministry okay you realize that um, like somebody said you need to have tender hearts and thick skin right so tender hearts which means the heart is always tender towards god soft pliable but you've got a thick skin meaning that okay no matter what people are going to say or people are going to talk about or do um it's it's thick you know the skin is thick in the sense you're not really taking it in okay um right so it's not a one time thing but it's a journey okay so the high word high road principle um it's not a one time thing it's it's going to be a journey okay um it also means that that you um you actually set for yourself a higher standard personally okay you set for yourself a higher standard 
which is the standard of God's word, but you set for yourself. Don't set a standard based on, okay, this is what is seems to be the standard here in this place. Okay. Now I go to another place, another environment. These are the words, this is the conversation, and this is how people are behaving. Right? So is your standard going to be the same or even higher? Or is it going to come down? Are we going to lower our standard? Right? So, because we are we, we are used to doing that, right? Maybe uh, you know, a different environment, a different set of people who don't maybe you know who are not believers, and is our standard coming down or is it remaining the same? That's the question, right? Um, especially you know if you're if you're a working professional and you you know you meet with different kinds of people, you now is your standard going to be the same, right? Or is it going to be even higher? Or are you lowering your personal standard? So which means that if you need to take a high road principle, that means the standards that we set for ourselves, that you set for yourself, needs to be higher. Right? OK. So which means that you're deciding, OK, no matter what, I'm not going to change this. I'm not going to compromise on this. Like you are, you're telling yourself, you're making a decision internally that this is how it's going to be okay okay any any questions um, before we move on to the next topic yeah so these are all you know very practical things and these are things that we can actually go back to you know uh, what I'll try and do is also share the the other book uh, the book PDF of the book and you can actually go through it this has a lot it has a lot of examples and so on, which you can actually um, spend a, you know, it's, it's an easy read. All of John C. Maxwell's books are like that. Um, but these are things that you can refer to, right? Any, any season in your life, um, we are going to be with people. We are going to be dealing with people. And this will really, you know, be helpful. Okay. 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 The next one is to create a win win relationship. Okay. Uh, win win relationship meaning, um, you know, this is this is another quote from um, from this author, um, right? Uh, who wrote? Uh, I forget the title of the book. Sorry, Stephen Covey, um, Stephen Covey, S Stephen Covey, Stephen Covey, or C O V E Y. Uh, he, he wrote about the habits of highly effective people. Stephen Covey, no? Okay, uh, he's not a believer. Uh, uh, in the management world and leadership. Uh, so he's written books, um, Habits of Highly Effective People. That's the title that I remember. Uh, you can check. Um, uh, Seven Habits, Highly Effective People. Yeah, so he's, he's the author of that book. Very popular um, book. Okay, so this is what he says. Okay, win-win is a frame of mind and heart that constantly seeks mutual benefit in all human interactions, okay? Win-win is based on the paradigm that there is plenty for everybody, that one person's success is not achieved at the expense or exclusion of the success of others, okay? So one person's success is not achieved at the exclusion of the success of others, okay? So which means that you win, and also let the others also be benefited. Okay, so that's um, that's that's the whole thing, you know, creating a rela relationship where there is win, and the others are also winning. Okay, so which means that you know, at no point uh, are the others feeling that they are robbed of something. Okay, they are robbed of it, or somebody's success. I contributed to somebody's success, but at the same time. Nothing has happened to me. They have taken everything out of me. Okay, so um, um, you know, uh, so this is um, especially you know beneficial, you know, when we talk of long-term relationships, right? Okay, so let's look at four principles here. Okay, um, it's called a boomerang principle. That means that you know all these. Uh, how do you know what a boomerang is? Yeah, have you tried it? No. Okay. 
Okay. So boomerang is basically um, it comes from the uh, Aboriginal Australian, you know, uh, this thing. It's actually used by the Aboriginals as a weapon. Indigenous people of Australia as a weapon. Okay. It's a uh, I, I don't know. Probably you can check online. This uh, it's like uh, yeah, it's, it's shaped like that. Yeah, and then they they throw it, and it's supposed to come back, uh, come back, and then yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to. Yeah. It, it's actually shaped like that, so it just goes and comes back. So, and you're supposed to throw it in a particular way, right? So the boomerang. Uh, yeah. So the huh? Try boomerang. What is that? Oh, it repeats. Oh, I see. Okay, but it does the reverse also, right? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Okay, just talking about the Instagram boomerang. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So that so that's the idea. So boomerang means it's you know when you say okay something boomeranged on me, it means okay. I tried something, but it came back. It hit me back, right? So, uh, so the boomerang principle is this: that uh, you know, it's about sowing and reaping. Okay? So when we help others, there is definitely something that we get in return. Okay, so uh, that is the boomerang principle. So whenever we help, we are actually helping ourselves. Whenever we help others, okay, it's 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 coming back to us. There's something that is coming back to us but um but the fact is that uh when it comes back to us many times we think okay i'm giving so much let's say in terms of money okay i'm giving so much and therefore you know i will get back you know the same thing you know that we're thinking like that but uh, john c maxwell talks about how when we when we when you know this particular principle whether it's investing in people whether it's whether you're being generous or whether you're helping others, the what you get back, right? It comes in in a different way. Okay, he talks about uh, three different things that that comes back to us. Okay, um, and basically you know, sowing and reaping. Okay, Galatians six verse nine. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Okay, so. Why does he say, you know, if you do not lose heart? That particular verse, Paul writes to the Galatians and he's saying, let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due, and due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So why do you think he's saying if we do not lose heart? If we do not give up, yeah. So what happens when you give up? Huh? Why? Huh? Yeah, you lose, lose heart, but because uh, as a result of losing heart, as a result of being discouraged, what do you stop doing? Yeah, you stop sowing. So that's what he's saying, right? He's, talk, he's saying, you know, we shall reap, which means that if we, if we, you know, if we do not lose heart, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. But what Paul is addressing is don't stop sowing or don't stop doing what you're doing right? don't grow weary while doing good okay because we may not all always get recognition people may not always acknowledge it right people may not always say thank you but the fact is there is a reward there is a reaping that comes okay so um so the uh, you know there are three things it talks about that Okay, something it could be when we are sowing, it could be of financial worth, or it could be something that is, you know, something of value. Maybe people give. Okay, you could get that because you're, you know, you're giving, you're helping, and well, people might give back. Okay, so that is one thing. But the second thing he talks about is that it does something to your value or to your character. Okay, so you're giving. And actually, the return is it need, need not be material, but it's something that happens to your character. The return that you're getting is characters. That is being built up. For example, you're giving generously out of your need, uh, even sacrificially. 
So there's something that is, you know, your selfishness is dealt with, right? Your, so you're building something, you're breaking something um, which is there, you know, which is maybe it was a selfish thing, it was a, you know, something was a self-centeredness and that is breaking. So which means your, the return that you're getting is, is not the same thing, but in terms of your character, something is being built, okay? The third thing, similar to that, is talking about virtues, right? Um, like patience and so so many things, right? So, um, so it means that we continue to do, continue to sow when it comes to people. Okay? So we look at <clears throat> things as, oh, uh, sorry, not things. When you look at people, when you look at the relationship as an investment, okay? So. There are two kinds of investing, right? Investing is like uh, sometimes it's like a okay. I want a lottery. Okay. Uh, how many of you have uh, seen lottery or you bought lottery? Yeah. In oops, <laughs> sorry. So in in uh, certain states it is uh, banned, right? Uh, I I don't know how is it in Andhra, Telangana. Yeah, it, it, you have to scratch. Yeah, you'll get whatever's. They are still they still have it, is it? Okay. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, okay, this is my investment. Okay, I want I want it immediately. Okay, um, and the return could be you know that, or you may not get anything. You lose whatever, right? So that could be the. Um, but the you know financial experts talk about a long term investment okay something that is invested steadily and over a period of time and uh, where the return is compounded many times over right of course investing in things that are you know uh, wisely investing where you consider the risk and consider the things so they talk about long term investment uh, where it's um, over a period of time okay. so in people also you know when we when we look at people when we talk about relationships uh, think of it as an investment okay whatever you are doing maybe sharing uh, maybe building others think of it as a long term investment right not like a lottery right it may not be an immediate thing but look at it as a long term investment okay um, so which means that uh, we have to, you know, some of the things that we looked at, we need to not think about ourselves, but think of others, put others first, okay? Um, and also it helps to look at what what is it that I'm investing, okay? So, so it brings us to the question, how can I invest in people? How can you invest in people? In what way? Encouraging them, okay? Okay. What does it mean to invest in people? In people. What does it mean? Uh -huh. uh, so, so, okay, let's just back up, rewind a bit. So, what does investing actually mean? Sowing, doing something. Your some action, right? Something that you're doing, something that you're putting, or uh, something that you're keeping aside, something that you're doing in order to get something back or uh, in future, right? So that is that is what investing is. I mean, you're looking at long term and so on. So, so if you follow the same thing, if you apply it when it comes to people, okay. So what is it that how how do we invest in people? Um okay. Mm. Mm. Invest in trust. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry, hey, I think you should use the mic. Okay. Okay, building and guiding. 
ശിവകുമാർ ശിവകുമാർ ബിൽഡിംഗ് ഗൈഡിംഗ് കൗൺസിൽ ഓക്കെ അഡ്വൈസിംഗ് ഓക്കെ സോ ഇഫ് യു ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് പീപ്പിൾ ആസ് നോട്ട് സംതിങ് ദറ്റ് യു ക്യാൻ ഓൾവേസ് വിത്ഡ്രോ but something that you can invest something that you can deposit right um then we see that okay at the right time you know there is a return and the return could be like you know these th- things that we looked at so the thing is to focus on when you want to when we look at the relationship or building a relationship um building a win win a mutually beneficial relationship we need to focus on investing right am i investing in people am i investing in uh, other people right now when we look at ministry ministry is going to be about people right ministry is about people uh, it's it's a, you know whether you like it or not it's always about people right so this is a very important principle for us to consider or when we you know we we consider people sometimes as what can i get out of them right so even in ministry we can make that mistake right what are some things that we can think of what is the what is the profit we get you know we looked at those three things right see the return can be in terms of like in terms of in in, in terms of valuables as what what he talks about in it, it, it return can be in terms of uh, in terms of character building in us the return can be in terms of uh, the contentment of seeing a life that is maturing and um, you know coming to christ and also built up in christ um, yeah 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 we're not we're not i don't know it just says that um, you know that is that could be one of the things right yeah like suppose you're being generous you're being kind well they could repay they could you know give back and thing that could be one of the things right yeah so yeah coming back to the question so uh, so in in ministry we are, we are, you know we they will always be there so when we look at investing in people's lives so in ministry what what could be some of the things that we could look at you know as getting out of people what do you think see like we might consider people as a statistic right so many people attended okay i want so many people to attend and it's not a it's not a bad thing right we want to grow both numerically and also in terms of you know spiritually and numerically it's not a it's not a bad thing expectation but if you're going to look at people as a statistic as a number right and this is your thing you know we need we need to fill these chairs we need to fill the building we need to fill the auditorium we need to you know then it is not really investing right it's what you can get out of right what are others out of the way okay. mm mm no i'm just looking at some of the negative things yeah so what are the ways by which you know we can or what are the different ways in which we can exactly but in practical ways what is it that we money yeah money is a mm yeah maybe people's time you know i want you to be there you need to be there and sometimes in ministry people use a lot of spiritual language and right? say okay if you want to be blessed you better be here and you know, we, we don't want you to lose your blessing you be here or sometimes fear right you're not coming to the house of god then you know how can you expect something good to happen in your life not coming to the house of god you know you need to be there right so people come out of a sense of fear and you know you want something out of them okay so 
so they, but if you turn the focus hey, i want to invest in their lives it's not a very popular thing right but you want to invest in their lives i want to give in to their lives right paul talks about how he wants to present every person mature or complete in christ jesus and he talks about that. he's saying okay, this is what this is why we labor this is what we do we want to present everyone mature in christ right okay so that so that's a boomerang principle which means that um um you know there will be a reward but we we do this um um knowing fully well that there will be a return okay and not to give up halfway okay then um when it comes to win win situation again um talks about the friendship principle okay so um the bible talks about he who has friends must himself be friendly okay and also to treat others as equals okay see now many times we confuse between maybe a designation or a role or a title and you know uh, treating people as equals okay now certain you know if you work in a formal setting be it ministry or even as a you know professional setting there there are different titles there are different roles okay like in an organization typically uh, you know what what, are, what could be some of the titles you know the top topmost person could be a ceo chief executive officer or a, or you could have a title like a pre president and if you okay you let's say you come down what are the other titles what are the other roles directors would be above right uh, board of directors yeah they they would be above yeah so you come down you could have a maybe a national level manager maybe a regional manager right uh, maybe a zonal manager somebody is taking care of north of the country south of the country east west then you could have like you said you know maybe branch managers you know so you have different levels right so the thing is that each one is carrying out a different role okay but are you going to be treating everyone you know if the chairman is not going to treat everyone equal okay if there is going to be a very um, you know you guys are low and i am high right you are nothing in front of me yes he carries he or she would carry a lot of responsibility lot of power um lot of authority but the fact is that everyone is equal okay as human beings we are equal in terms of the roles we do they are different but we are working towards the same thing you know we need to understand that okay so so this friendship thing is uh, principle is that you treat everybody as equal no matter how big a person you are no matter how what you know different role that you might have in the organization or in the ministry that we are still equal right whether you're a senior pastor or anyone else right we are still equal in the in the eyes of god we are equal right yes or no yeah yeah so the thing is to have that mindset in order to create a win win kind of a relationship otherwise it will be always about you need to serve me right you need to serve me you need to do this for me and i need to be benefited at the end of the day right so it will be that kind of an attitude right okay um so the question good question to ask is you know am i am i being a friend to those who i'm working with am i being a good friend now you know the formality of the role uh, we we cannot be pals or buddies or you know but do we treat others in a friendly manner that's a simple thing or do we just pretend that they don't exist at all yeah okay because when when we treat them as equals when we treat them as you know in a friendly manner then the response that we get from them is also different right okay um let's look at um the next one then um which is um you know which is the partnership principle okay um we are going to talk about that in the 
the in the team teamwork uh, but the thing is this that you know there's only so much you can do alone there's only so much you can do as a as a you know as a solo act as a person you know because your strength your wisdom your knowledge everything is limited just think about the internet okay just think about maybe there's something like um, how many of you have used chat gpt chat gpt just think about it right for the exam huh? <laughs> you know, but just think about it just the google search okay, what is it you search for something okay, everything comes you, know, you just type in a word and you say okay okay ministry and you get so many websites you get so many results or in chat gpt case you know you just get a full document maybe what is it it's actually collective information collective wisdom from from thousands or millions of millions of websites millions of uh, maybe documents blogs videos that people have uploaded okay so your search as actually you know you are actually presenting a request for the collective information of the entire planet and right? whatever is uploaded there whatever is there and on every server all that is coming through just just consider that and what whatever effort that we might put as a single person as an individual to collect information to get information or learning right you see the difference right so if you collaborate if we collaborate if we partner with people there is so much more wisdom strength learning right and there is which means that it it translates into um impact as well okay so um like the acronym for team right t e a m right like somebody say okay together everyone achieves more right together everyone achieves more right team right so it definitely increases our strength increases our learning increases our potential right um to know under the lord actually sent them out two by two right when he sent them out at least you know one other person he sent them out to right um okay in corinthians we see first corinthians paul writing and he's saying you know he's talking about the team he's talking about the fact that hey we are actually god's team you know we work with god um and he, and he's saying you know this is what happened i planted apollos watered and then god gave the increase and he also talks about the fact that we are all the same right um and there is the need for partnering there is a need for teamwork and um, you know in in all areas of our lives uh, we need to be um, you need to have this aspect in mind you know can i partner can i collaborate in order to be impactful okay um okay i think that's a very simple uh, very practical thing the partnership uh, principle okay um uh, there's one more i thought we'll finish it okay we'll look at it next class right we'll stop right here okay thank you